Um, well, it's my pleasure now to uh, introduce our final uh, speaker for this morning, Mr. Daniele Ferrari, who is the CEO of Versalis, to come up and talk to us about the circular economy. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies and uh, distinguished guests, good morning. It is, first of all, my pleasure to be here, and I'd like to thank, first of all, Josef Albenian, uh, Dr. Sadun, and the whole GPCA leadership for inviting me again to talk in this prestigious forum, which, by the way, I take it as a good sign. It means I didn't embarrass you last time, so I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, what I'm talking to you today is about a subject that you've never heard before, Circular economy, okay. So, let's try to look at it in a different way and let's try to put it in the context on how the chemical industry can react to that. Obviously in a positive and constructive way. Images are showing much stronger than words here. And uh, we are all aware that the problem of waste and marine litter is real and is on everybody's lips today. And newspaper, social networks, families talk about that. We even talk over dinner with our family about it. So plastic in the ocean is definitely part of public debate, but also you hear prestigious organizations talking about like World Economic Forum, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, saying that the ocean may contain more plastics than food and than fish in reality for uh, unless uh, in 2050, unless uh, some dramatic actions are taken. So in a broader sense here, we are talking about uh, an unprecedented attack to the plastic industry, but also to the chemical industry as a whole. So the question is, uh, what we need to ask ourselves is not how we can be an active part uh, to the solution, it's not how we can react, it's how we can be the solution to that problem. And uh, driving an economic system which has new consumer pattern as well. What can we do? Well, everybody has the answer. Certainly we can uh, immediately stop having waste going into the ocean. We certainly, in parallel, we can uh, develop innovative technology to clean the sea. But the question is not that, it's uh, how and how fast we can do it and how sustainable those technologies we can be implementing are. And uh, as chemical producers and as technology providers, we are the key players for a successful transition to the circular economy. That's a bit dramatic. We have been talking about numbers before, but uh, a growing world means also a growing waste. That's the reality. So we need to look at some numbers to understand the, the phenomenon, not only pictures here. We live in a growing world. The population will increase by another billion by 2030. We have heard different numbers here. And they are more concentrating, this is what I wanted to draw your attention, in large metropolitan cities, so the, so the so-called mega cities. The mega cities will be 43 by 2030, which are the one with more than 10, billions, uh, cities, 10 million citizens. And most of them in, uh, is in high-speed developing countries. This means that more and more product, food, services will be required and more waste will be produced, therefore. So overall, uh, cities around the world in 2012 uh, contributed to the generation of about 1.3 billion of tons of solid waste. And this volume will increase to an estimated 2.6 billion of tons in 2030 and 3.4 in 2050. So these are huge numbers. Complex scenario. And in this scenario, the winners will be the ones that can prove their ability to manage this growth and the necessity that derive from it. So efficient use of resources, maximization of the waste value. We can't talk anymore about uh, waste as an issue. We talk about waste as a resource. So the concept, so-called the urban mining, is, is something which is uh, more and more relevant for the future. And let me be even extreme on this concept. How about when viable and sustainable technology will be available going back to the previous landfill waste and use it as a mine. So big cultural and technology shift in order to do that. But this has to happen in future. Let's look at the plastic itself. Now, from 1950 to 2015, there were 8.3 billion tons of virgin plastic produced. 
And again, we've heard the numbers before. In the same period, about 80% of them, of the plastic waste produced, which is 6.3 gigatons, were disposed or landfill or dispersed in the environment was, and then only a minimum part was recycled, about 9%. Pursuing this production and waste rhythm, it is estimated that we reach the 15 gigatons by 2015, which is really something unbearable. This means that the valuable product, like plastic, is thrown into the landfill, is uh, worse in the environment, becoming an integral part of the marine litter program. And you know, 8 million tons of plastic leak into the ocean every year goes, and uh, Asia accounts for 80% of that. Uh, Drilled. So today's challenge is therefore global infrastructure approach for waste collection, a renewed awareness for consumers, and a valuable management of waste through the reduction of reuse and recycling materials. We no longer talk about waste management, again, we talk about resource. So let's look at the receipt now for the economy, which is now becoming circular and moving away from a linear model. So it's about closing this loop is about changing production and consumer partners fundamentals like uh, and introducing issues like reuse, recycling, and why not repairing in order to minimize the waste. It is clear that the need of circularity is not linked to only to the environmental matters, but uh, it is also key from a competitive point of view. Furthermore, greater efficiency means uh, less energetic and raw material cost. It means in fundamentally a lot for countries or regions like Europe, where feedstock are more expensive compared to the other regions in the world. So a full circularity approach in Europe, should we adopt that completely, will, for instance, halve the emission of CO2 projected for 2050. They will go from uh, 530 million into 234. That's a big one. And it's estimated that the cost, for instance, of mobility could be reduced by 60 to 80 percent, or the cost of living in general could go down by 25 or 35 percent. And I could go on with numbers like that, but it's clear to everybody that this is the approach. So this trend, together with, we heard, digitalization, accelerated globalization, are coming to create a radical shift for our industry. Only those who are designed innovative business model will become the real game changer. And I completely agree with Jim on that. As I say, the chemical industry being the upstream of most industrial chains is the key player for this successful transition towards the circular economy. And as a technology provider, we are able to develop new processes and new products to improve the circularity. And the latter is a, a fundamental concept. Transforming our economy system means not only look at the end of life of products, but the whole cycle, maximizing yield and resource efficiencies. So redesign becomes an imperative. And here we talk about eco-design. Eco-design together with the whole players on the value chain is uh, something which can help us to be more efficient in the products and easy to be recycled. But also our process have to do more with less. I know efficiency is, uh, is already in our DNA, but uh, there are new opportunities here in this field for instance, deriving from digitalization. The alternative feedstock, finding the right mix between traditional sources, renewable sources, and secondary raw materials is important because it leads to diversification through scientific and economic evidence based again on life cycle approach and not ensure, ensuring that the overall sustainability is considered. Our industry can make another important contribution to improving the technology for recycling, in association, obviously, with the various players of the value chain. Simple mechanical recycling today is not enough, and we all know that. We need to develop new physical problems, new traceability of material, a new chemical process to complement that. And to do that, we need a lot of resources and a lot of innovation. Let's see how Europe, uh, we were talking before about that, is reacting to that. So Europe is, uh, there is a strong push in Europe for the regulatory point of view. And uh, for the transition, we have really engaged all the leadership uh, in this industry. EU produces 25 million tons of plastic per year, but only 30% are into the recycling loop today. 
In January 2018, the Commission published the European Strategy for Plastics and in a circular economy, even more ambitious, showing its vision for a new economy. And Plastics Europe already announced immediately after our voluntary commitment for Chloride Plastic 2030, which is a concrete set of targets and initiatives which address the global challenges that are being put to us from the European Commissioners. I made a comment here. I personally also rather prefer to see effort being put in a reuse, recycling concept instead of product ban. Because the first approach, in fact, generates jobs, investment opportunities, resources that can be reinvested in the industry, whether the other side it produces unemployment and issues if we are not giving the rest of the value chain enough time to convert. So, uh, circular any. Let me talk a little bit about our mother company and how we approach it in a big oil and gas company. We certainly have uh, circularity in, as a strategic driver across our group, and uh, it's an integrated synergic way, the way we look at that process, asset, product. Uh, we already implemented circular principle by the transformation uh, in a low carbon perspective of assets which are no longer profitable uh, or under disposal. We have conversion of traditional refineries in biorefineries or traditional petrochemicals in uh, renewable, petro uh, renewable chemical uh, units. In addition to those, uh, we use reclaimed land from uh, previously old remediation plants uh, in order to create new solar wind farms or renewable energy fields. So we are also directing all the research towards innovative solutions in terms of new products and process that aim to enhance all the materials. And by the end of the year, we'll be running a semi-industrial waste to fuel unit based on proprietary technology. Let's go back to the chemical business and ourselves. We have embraced uh, definitely the circular economy through the three classic strategic pillars, feedstock, eco-design, and recycling technology. And I will go very quickly on that. This is uh, part of the deep transformation I was talking to you about two years ago. We have never changed our strategy. We are following that. And the three pillars are being implemented today in terms of diversification, recycling, and eco-design. Uh, I'd like to illustrate now some practical example of that. So at least... Uh, one which I particularly like because it talks about the single-use product that are so much under the focus is about recycling polystyrene, where we have successfully proven that 20% of product derived from post-consumer packaging, such as a fundamental single-use product, they can be put in our plants in Mantua, testing the use for producing expanded polystyrene sheet for building insulation. So taking it from an issue, into an opportunity, again, in a circular economy way and in energy efficiency. We are now in the next step of this technology, which is the industrialization, and we are going to be doing that in the, in the same plant. On the alternative feedstock side, we have a strategic partnership with the Bridgestone America to develop and deploy a comprehensive technology package to commercialize our natural rubber from Guayule. The Guayule production and the agrochemical technologies will be optimized at the pilot unit in Bridgestone in Mesa, Arizona, to achieve industry-leading performance in, in terms of yield and quality. But also we are concentrating on the byproducts that are coming out from the biomass after the extraction of Guayule, because there are very interesting chemicals that go into the intermediates, very special agrochemicals, pharmaceutical or cosmetic industry. Focusing on chemical from renewables, I was talking to you here about in 2015 about that plan, and it's now becoming and shaping up quite well, because we are executing that step by step, and uh, we already launched industrial plant, uh, R&D project, cooperation, partnership with several players in the main renewable industry chain, and uh, as I told you, it is a business model which is developed on synergies, and not only be with product on the renewable side, but also on traditional supply chain line that we have in our Versalis portfolio. And partnership are key factors to reach this target, catalyzing growth and innovation. In line with this strategy, we recently acquired the bio run activities of Mossig Isolfi, and we are now defining the action plan to relaunch it to integrate those activities in our 
intermediate production. The plant also includes, obviously, the production of bioethanol and biointermediates. And there is a proprietary licensing called Proesa that we are grouping in our licensing package. And we'll be able to do that around the world. The, the other interesting point uh, I wanted to show you through a little video here is uh, it's another practical example of eco-design. And it's by the collaboration of different people in the value chain. So it's very representative. We are talking about soccer, of course, as Italian, you know, we, we like to talk about soccer anyway. And uh, artificial grass fields. Uh, today, when they reach the end of life, uh, it's an issue because it, in the average of seven to 10 years, they need to be replaced. And because of the mixture of polymers that they have, uh, it's either incinerated or landfilled or definitely not uh, used for taking the maximum advantage. So to increase the circularity of this side of application, we have uh, involved in the project uh, some of the recyclable type of artificial turf uh, involving different polymers and different players in the value chain. So Versalis is the feast of supplier for different grades of polyethylene. Radici Group is the manufacturer of the yarn and the fabric. And Safitex has the patent and high recyclability product called Econext. And as you can see, this means the artificial turf at the end of its life can be reused as a secondary raw material by milling it, as you can see, and immediately reprocessed in terms of densification into very valuable items like uh, safety spot protection, uh, other tools for, for industrial uses. And, uh, and we are so proud about this because it's a real example of working together in the value chain and creating value for a very valuable material from the beginning to the end. Finally, we have joined also the Operation Clean Swap, which is a voluntary agreement uh, part of Plastics Europe, again, to prevent the restricted and restrict the loss of plastic granules in all our operations. And again, that's an entire value chain initiative because it takes processor, compound, bulk terminal, operator, transporters, waste management, and it works really under the same objectives. Let me come to the conclusion. I think the circular economy model should be considered as a natural and necessary evolution of our economic system. As chemical producers, we must be at the forefront of this challenge. We have the technology background to lead this transformation and therefore to stay competitive in this challenging scenario. And this is not enough. There is a complex issue. So in addition to a good advocacy work that is carried out by the Association, Plastics Europe, World Plastic Council, CEFIC, and all the organizations in the world, we need powerful and global vertical industry chain alliances. We need practical examples. Producers of raw materials, converters, brand owners, consumer recyclers, institutions to work together to reach a truly and valuable solution. And uh, this is especially for today, but particularly for tomorrow. So innovative design, production consumer models for continuing to offer the world more and more valuable products with the aim to improve life and to face the global environmental challenge. Thank you.